Hi, first of all, thanks so much for taking the time to do this interview. Um, how have you been today? A busy day, and uh, I was starting to be a little bit tired. I saw the the interview was 30 minutes ago. Uh, so I connected 30 minutes ago and sent a, a mail to uh, to Ear Music, telling that it doesn't work, but I just messed up with uh, the agenda. So... Oh, yeah, yeah, it was supposed to be now. I'm sorry you yeah. had it, but uh, well, all good in the end. I'm, I'm here now, so uh, <laughs> hopefully you didn't have to wait for half an hour. Uh, but yeah, um, your new album is, is coming out in, in March. It was also postponed, unfortunately, but how are you in general looking forward to the album release? Um, basically, at the musician point of view, um, a release of an album is lot later than when I stopped, I finished the, the song. So we are impatient. I don't know how to say in English. We are looking for the release really hard because, uh, yeah, we we composed all the songs like we, we many months ago. And um, and we want to come back uh, touring, doing festivals and, uh, and tours. So I'm really looking for the the release and i hope that the release will be uh great i mean yeah this is i guess also the first album that you're like a, i guess full-time member of the band even though you're already the producer and you know uh touring with them so how does that feel to sort of go on this new chapter with the band um i mean technically it doesn't change anything uh in a way that i i'm working with the band for 15 years uh, playing piano and composing songs uh, behind my desk. The only difference is playing live. Mm. And the band, I remember there telling me uh, just before I I said it, I said him, I'm okay. He, he told me, um, Kevin, you are playing yeah, the pianos and you are doing some arrangement and a lot of stuff. And we would love to have you also on stage to share uh, to share the crowd reaction, to to share um, stories, uh, live stories with us, and I told him, okay, I'm I'm a kind of uh, shy guy, but why not? And uh, yeah, we did it this way, and it has been great so far. Yeah, well, and now you also have to do interviews, so maybe that's yeah. not the best thing as a shy person, but um, yeah, cool. Um, now, if we go back for a second, like, uh, Shahili was released five years ago, and that's, I guess, in, in the terms of, you know, the all the album release cycles and such, that's quite a long time in between the albums. So what was sort of the time frame for this record, considering there was a pandemic and such in between? Like, when did you first start working on this? Yeah, I think that the pandemic has been quite difficult because as a band, we practically have no income. So if you are not able to release an album, um, you can tour, you can do anything. And we didn't add the money to, to tour. Um, and the pandemic... Um, didn't give us the opportunity to earn some money. So it was a really difficult, but also this, this COVID uh, gave us the opportunity to change the way we were composing. I mean, for the previous albums, uh, everything was done digitally. I mean, uh, sending ideas to Gmail, waiting 24 hours to have a, a mail from there with, uh, with, um, with some ideas back and forth this way. And Strangely for this album, um, yeah, ba I need to tell you a story. It will be clear. Um, <laughs> we were touring when the border closed mm. uh, because of the pandemic. And we were in a little uh, venue in Leipzig, in Germany. And so when everything closed, we had 24 hours to come back. So as a French guy, I could do it. But for, for the Tunisians of the the three mem Tunisian members of the band, uh, the Tunisian government didn't bring some flights, so they they were stuck in the middle of nowhere. And they told me, Kevin, can we go to your place with you? So I told them yes. I had no idea how many months it will uh, stay like this, and we end up staying together six months. So for six months, 
they couldn't make it to Tunisia. Impossible. Um, so yeah, I, I took this support. It, it has been difficult because six guys in a little uh, house was kind of messy, but I took this opportunity to um, to compose real time, like with, with the guy, like like every band should do. You know, I, I had my piano, uh, asking there some idea and back and forth. It was ten times more productive than uh, working with internet. So also this pandemic allow us to uh, to compose like a real band and uh, and stay hours together to to try some ideas. We we compose maybe. 50, 60 songs, and we throw, we 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 throw back eighty percent of the material because we 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 thought it was not good enough, but it was a good experience and it changed a bit the 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 style also uh, of this album in comparison of the others, and I I'm pretty happy with the result. Yeah, um, that's actually quite interesting because I guess a lot of bands actually experienced it the other way around. Uh, which was also refreshing for them to start to, you know, compose things digitally and so on. Um, would you say that with the eye on the future, is that sort of the way you want to progress as a band as well and do similar things again? We will try to. I will try to. I, I'm actually uh, composing the upcoming album, not Karma, but the, the, the new one. And I will try to invite there to work together. Of course, bringing a, a wall band is impossible because it's too expensive. Uh, but I will try at the end of the process to um, to try things with him before. When I say end of the process, I mean end of the composing process, just before the pre-production. Yeah. All right. Um, well, while listening to the album, I also noticed, and, and this was also already a bit clear in the previous album, that you're sort of stepping more and more away from this progressive sound and making the sound maybe a little bit more accessible for, for people to enjoy uh, with many different kinds of influences. And sort of like since Shehili, you've been moving into this new direction. Um, do you feel like with this album, you've really sort of set the frame for work for what is your actual sound? Mm, I don't know. I mean, I try not to intellectualize when I compose. I, I mean, I don't try, I don't intellectualize, intellectualize when I compose, but the, the process of the, the COVID stuff, as, as I told you, changed the way we, we were working. So we ended with this. So I have no idea if we will put more arrangement on the new one or less or whatever, but it's this plus uh, or the producer I worked with, uh, Jacob Hansen, who told me, Kevin, uh, you you bring me uh, eighty layers of tracks for each song. Uh, why not trying to make it simple? Um, and he told me you have to know that average listener can't handle millions of notes uh, per second. So let's try to find um, principle principle subject uh, in each part. It can be. Uh, vocal line, of course, and it's mainly vocal lines, but it also can be guitar riffs, guitar solos, and this kind of stuff. But don't try to put too much volume on the arrangement underneath, otherwise, otherwise you will have too much notes. And it, it was the case of with Shehili. I, I was really happy with it because I like to put many notes as a musician. But from a listener point of view, um, I realized that it was a good idea to uh, to follow. Uh, Jacob intuition. So yeah, the production plus the composing process did something different, but I, I have no idea uh, what we will come with. Uh, yeah, with the, the new album, I, I don't know. Now, like uh, yeah, you mentioned the writing process. Um, but what I also thought about like the production is that um, it actually sounds quite massive in a way, even though. Uh, what you said, you were sort of maybe like stripping it down a little bit. Uh, still sounds massive. Um, and I remember the previous album being produced by you and two others. Um, what was it this time around? Um, yeah, basically, I'm personally limited by uh, time mm -hmm. and uh, gear also. And uh, it was important for me to uh, to 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 speak and to 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 work with a fresh here 
you know, and uh, and, and Jacob is one of the best um, mixer and, and producer I know. And what we can see is less is more. I mean, there is less elements, but also putting less elements allow you to bring more upfront um, reverbs, delays, and all this kind of stuff. And this is what opens a, so a sound. If you put too much element, it can sound massive. So if you put less, you can do something massive. And mm -hmm. this is what it did, I mean. Um, what was sort of your your goal sound wise with the album? Since I mean, you've also done production and such. Like, was there any like big idea or, or like such that you had with the guys that you wanted to reach with this album, production wise? Um, we always try different stuff. I mean, when we, we started uh, Miras, um, we were yeah basically the first to to try to blend some incompatible elements. I'm thinking about uh, quarter tone violins with saturated guitars or darbokas and duff with drums. And at the first time, when you try to, to melt this, it's not working. So you try, you iterate. It's like a, a research lab, you know. And my, my aim is to, to, to do some research, to try to innovate. Um, yeah, I, I think I think innovation in in composing is is important, and I try to innovate some stuff. For example, I don't know on the on the new song uh, "Candles Cry" of Karma, um, I blended two ridiculous stuff, which mean a, a, a finger clapping at the, in, in the beginning of the the song, plus guitar, which is not, which could be okay in pop music, not in metal, but. Mm. Uh, I had these two elements. I tried to blend, and I did some research to make it uh, work because it's difficult sometimes to blend this kind of stuff because uh, a finger a clap is acoustic, and when you put a, a saturated guitar on it, you can't hear it a lot. So you have to transform the sound, put some drive in your clapping, this kind of stuff. It's it's very technical, mm. uh, and yeah, my my aim is to 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 um, to play, yeah, to play finding new new solution yeah i think i can be mistaken but i felt like there were a lot of moments like that maybe in the record especially with like more percussive like of course i i i don't know the details or the different instruments used and such but like more percussive things and that go with a weird bell sound or something like that felt really interesting um and also created a lot of like dynamics so is that also an important thing for you that there's like you know just dynamics in an album and a lot of yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sound and dynamic is almost as important as a note. If you sing a gimmick with a shitty song, song a shitty sound, so, sorry, um, it could sound ridiculous, but if the sound is rich, it can be interesting. So, uh, building a melody is a matter of doing some sound design plus having ideas compatible with the sound design. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about like you you want to innovate in music as well, do you do you, do you do like a lot of like research as in do you listen to a lot of music like maybe you know not even metal necessarily but maybe classical music or film scores or something like that? Yeah, no, I, I don't listen metal. It it, it could be destructive mm -hmm. because if you want to innovate in metal, the last stupid stuff would be to listen to metal. So I don't, um, when I say I don't, sometimes I'm listening songs of France, of course, but I don't listen to metal that much. Um, I, I tend to to listen to classical music, for example, uh, Bartok or Rachmaninoff, which are great composers. Also, um, um, uh, Satie, Satie uh, and Mozart, but Mozart, I, I, I was younger. I, I really discovered uh, Rachmaninoff when I was maybe 14 or 15 uh, years old. And he is one of my main influences, along with French composers from the 80s, like uh, William Scheller, which is maybe unknown for you, but he's, he was very famous in, in France. He was a, a singer, a, a piano player and singer with, with very touching melodies. 
uh, Véronique Sanson, of course, qui, which is a, an awesome uh, singer in, in, from the 80s in France. So yeah, my, my, my basic influence are classical music and, uh, and French music. And we blend it with oriental influences for the arrangement that are coming from the three members which are living in Tunisia. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned classical music because I feel like if you look back just simply at the history, there are so many like groundbreaking composers for us. And I feel sometimes that doesn't really happen as much anymore, that people are not really trying new things anymore than that everything has been done. So it's great to see that you are trying to innovate as well. Um, yeah. yeah, but it's difficult when, when it's a matter of... Uh... Arrangement, classical arrangement, it's it's really difficult to innovate. There is one band that can do real good uh, classical arrangement is Symphony X. Uh, I know that Michael is a huge fan of um, of the composer of um, what is his name, um, John Williams. Yeah, he's a he's a real fan of John Williams. But few few bands can do this kind of arrangement. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also always interesting to see that there are somehow some similarities as well between metal music and classical music in that sense that, you know, there are lots of ideas that come from classical music rather than pop songs, for instance. Yeah, that's true. It's because of the structure of the songs and the harmony. Um, metal music harm harmonies are exactly the same as classical music harmonies. Only the song, only we, we bring electricity uh, decades ago. And with electricity, we could saturate the guitars, but that's it. I mean, yeah. the, the structure is the same. Now, going back to the album, um, I remember that the lyrics to Shahili were written by your partner and another person. I don't remember his name, sorry. Um, who are also not really in the band, but part of, you know, the Mira family. Um, but was it the same people who worked on the lyrics this time or were you guys more involved or how was it this time? Yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, we, we worked with uh, Amen Jawadi, which almost did all the lyrics of uh, Miras, except for some songs uh, on uh, Legacy and Karma. Uh, my wife handled it and she did she did it great. I mean, I, I love the ly lyrics of the song Believer. Uh, that's that's my wife, and I'm quite proud of it. Um, but for this album, yeah, we we worked with the uh, Amen, but also uh, Britney Slays of uh, Unleash the Ashers, oh, okay. uh, the band. and she's brilliant to to understand what we want. I mean, when we compose with Miras, we don't uh, uh, write the lyrics, and after all, we we compose, we we do everything like phonetically what we want, the inflection, the mm -hmm. vowels, and syllables everything and after we have a theme and uh, we uh, we we provide this theme and and the uh, and the lyricist try to to adapt to to the story and try to find the, the right word to be pronounced the most accurate way depending on the situation mm. so you guys come up basically with all the the themes on the record if i understood that correctly so i mean this this album is called karma and there's no title track so um, is that also the main theme and concept about the album, or is it just like loose stories here and there? No, Karma is not a concept album, but um, the theme are about all the frustration, especially coming from the guys from Tunisia. I mean, we are in a band, we have been together for 15 years, and now I understand what is real racism and what mm -hmm. is real discrimination. And... Um, there, the lead singer, which is very sensitive, told me that he wanted to talk about the, the subject, so, which means discrimination, racism, but also um, climate change, wars. And um, after all, we, we try to, to find a single word which can represent uh, all this theme. And uh, he, ended, he had the idea of, of karma because... He, 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 first of all, he trusts in karma. I don't, to be totally honest, because of my studying, because I'm, I did a lot of mathematics and I'm a more pragmatic person. But he trusts a lot in karma. And it's linked to the cover and the rotten apple on the cover. We, we try to figure out how to find 
an asset, a single asset to to represent all the to resume all the theme yeah, of the album. Yeah, well, you did rem uh, mention the racism, and I heard you also in um, different interviews say that it's extremely like difficult for you to to also just get a visa approved or something for the guys who live in Tunisia or are Tunisian. Um, and with this kind of polarizing climate, do you like? Does it really does it demotivate you to tour as well, or like do you try to keep a positive atmosphere despite like all these struggles and and such that you know inherently like are maybe not changeable if if the society doesn't want to? We we, we try to keep a positive attitude, but sometimes I mean sometimes we are demotivated. I mean. Imagine you, uh, I remove your credit card because it's forbidden. I remove I remove all your euros because it's forbidden, and you can get in Europe. And that's the case for the for the band. I mean, when I organize a tour, uh, if I did a single mistake, mean for example, I forget to uh, buy for the meal of the Tunisians in the flight, they will not eat anything. If I forget um, an hotel, they will sleep uh, on the floor and it happened. It happened. It happen. um, when, when we uh, played the tour in South America, for example, we missed 100% of the flight. I mean, I was showing my passport, the guy is showing the green passport. Okay, you don't pass. We need to ask you some question. Why are you here? We don't trust you are a musician. We trust, we think that your visa is a fake. So the life of, of Miras is 10 times more difficult than for regular bands. So sometimes it can be demotivated, but 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 we, we try to carry on. I mean, and we could do, we are not a million um, record sailor, but but we could do better than bands that can, that have money, uh, connection with business and everything. So I'm kind of pr proud of, uh, of this. Yeah, very much. And um, the reason why I'm asking this is also because I find it very important to talk about it. So, you know, maybe somebody sees it and starts thinking like, this is not the way you should treat people. But I guess life is not that that easy, unfortunately. But uh, well, speaking of touring, I noticed that you guys haven't announced any dates yet. Is there plans in the works or is it all very complicated right now no for, for for the moment we are focusing on the on communicating on the on the summer festivals and of course we are working on a tour it's taking time because yeah the, the price of the tour bus are really really expensive so we have to make sure that we can find contiguous um venues not too far from from each other so it's taking a li little bit more time than usual but um we will announce uh, when we are one hundred percent sure of uh, what we will do. I mean, yeah, well, great. Uh, so I suppose that you you will announce the festival shows within the next couple of months, whenever the festivals are dropping their their stuff. But that's nice to look forward to. Are you also working on like a European tour or something at some point? Or yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, maybe for. Um, for September or October. We don't know preci precisely when, but we are putting all the stuff together to make it happen. So we are, it's still in a working progress. All right. Well, I hope that uh, Finland is going to be part of that as well, but let's see. I know it's tricky to get out here. But yeah, anyway, that's it for my questions. Do you have any last thoughts you want to share with your fans? Um. Yeah, basically, I'm... Uh, I would love to discuss with a lot of fans when the album is released to have the feedback because of, of, of what they feel about the songs, uh, because the, the composing process is, is not 100% introspective for me. Uh, maybe it's 50%, but 50% is for the people. I mean, we, we play for the people, we, we don't play for ourselves. So um, I would love to have their opinion on what they feel, what is good and or what they don't like, why not? Uh, to improve myself and to and for the band to improve, so yeah. And uh, and uh, last word for the fans. Um, I hope to see maximum of fans possible during the summer festivals, of course.